So I've done a video on why modern AAA gaming is dying. I've done a video on the fall of Ubisoft. I've done a video on the fact that Xbox are in trouble. And the list goes on and on and on. And one that really frustrates me is the fact that modern PC gaming sucks. And there's one reason for it. When it comes to gaming on a console, you have set hardware. You now have SSDs in the, both the PS5, the Series X. I can't even remember if the Series S has one. I believe it has. But there is really good hardware in the consoles. And when games release, they're, I'm going to say they're a lot more optimized than what they are on the PC. But the thing is, with the PC... Players are spending upwards of two, three thousand dollars, pounds, whichever currency. A PC costs a lot more money than a console. And when games release, they are oftentimes, especially in 2023, optimized way worse than what they are for console. And as a console and a PC gamer, it's really, really frustrating to see. I would love to get my hands on a PS5 at some point, but currently I have a Series X and I have, I'm going to say, a mid-tier PC. I've got 16 gig RAM, I've got a Ryzen 7 3700X, and I've got an RTX 2070 Super. But I found a website known as PC Gamer, and they have listed the more, I'm going to say, notable games of 2023. And if we have a look through this, or if I tell you the games that pop up on this list, you have Forspoken. That was an absolute mess when it first launched. I don't know if they've made any progress on any of these games I'm going to tell you about. We're basically covering the launch state of these games, or the pretty much like noting the games that have launched in a bad way so we have forespoken that was the 24th of january we have dead space the remake which was the 27th of january and while that was a fantastic game like the reviews are really really good for that one i haven't played it personally but what i have seen is bugs noted that completely block your progress essentially there was an issue i don't know if it was all platforms pc whatever but there was an issue where all of the doors that you needed to go through were locked to standby. You couldn't actually make any progress through any doors, no matter what you did. So there was basically a standby door bug that blocked progress for some players. And it's not going to affect every single player out there. Some players are going to have really good performance, some are not. And I think with PC gaming, it used to be a lot better than it currently is. At least like 2023 has been awful for PC gaming. And I totally understand when it comes to a console, you've just got to optimize the game for one set of hardware. And then when it comes to PC, there are millions of different configurations that players run. So optimizing the game is harder, but these people have jobs, they have experience, qualifications and everything like that. So they should be able to do it. Or I'm going to say at least do a much better job than they are currently doing. So we've had Forspoken, we've had the Dead Space remake, and there's possibly going to be a couple of early access games included in this list as well. But moving into February, we had Company of Heroes 3. I've not heard, like, it's basically been mixed with Company of Heroes 3. But then we also had Kerbal Space Program 2, which I've heard is really, really buggy. It's an early access one, but it's the sequel. And I would personally believe that a sequel, regardless of being early access or not, should be in a much better state than what people are saying Kerbal Space Program 2 is in. And not only that, as an early access title, they are charging £45 for Kerbal Space Program 2. The really bad thing for Kerbal Space Program 2 is you're paying £45 for early access, and they have stated in what's basically the description of early access that they expect the price of Kerbal Space Program 2 to increase once all of the planned features are added by the 1.0 release. So a £45 early access is going to become more expensive over time as they add more features and stuff into the game, or at least come out of early access. So it's a game that's probably better to buy early, because you're saving yourself money over time, like in the long run, but at the same time, if you buy it early, you're still going to have to wait to have a solid experience until it releases out of early access. And then in this list as well, we have a game called Perish, which I played, which was not that good at all. Hogwarts Legacy, while it was fantastic again on the console, at least for me personally, on PC, I've seen a lot of complaints about the, like, basically the polishing, the optimization, the performance and stuff of that game as well. Then we had a Ubisoft game, The Settlers New Allies. I've seen reviews of that game that I've sat there and watched. I think it was worth a buy that did it. And he mentioned that 
they've basically taken a lot of features out of the series that players used to absolutely love. But they're charging, I think, 50 quid for that game too. Then Wild Hearts, that's got really bad reviews because of the performance and everything like that. Then, as mentioned, Company of Heroes 3, Kerbal Space Program 2. And that's pretty much it for February. There was quite a lot of games that released in February, but none that really stand out that much. Then for March, we had Wolong Fallen Dynasty. That was, again, performing quite well on the Xbox. But yeah, you uh, head over to the PC version. You look on Steam and a lot of players are complaining of problems within that game. Then we had Resident Evil 4, the remake, which a lot of players were very, very happy with. But if you look at the DLC they've got for that game or under the DLC section, you have a load of microtransactions that were chucked into the game. And then finally, for the big standout ones from March, you had The Last of Us Part 1. The PC port was fucking awful from what I've heard. And you do get a couple of good games chucked into the mix like Deceive Inc. I've heard really good things about that. Have a Nice Death. That's another one that I've heard lots of good stuff about. Dredge, that was a fantastic game. And then you also get things like Crime Boss Rock A City. I'm actually going to be playing that game very soon. I, I don't know why, but I really want to try the game. But I've heard that it's absolutely awful. The way people are talking about that game is as though they put like 20 times more of a budget into getting voice acting and stuff done and having celebrities in the game than what they did on the actual gameplay. But then we go to April, we had Dead Island 2. I'm not entirely sure about the performance of that one on PC, but I'm going to say it wasn't a game that people are going to give like a, a 90 plus review score for or anything like that. It was a game that took way too long to actually get released. It went through multiple development companies and stuff. And it was a fun game, but that fun was like splattered about here and there. It wasn't an amazing game. The best thing about it was the combat. The story was just stupid. There was a lot of satire in there. However, that is one of the better games to release on PC. Then we also have Minecraft Legends. And uh, yeah, that was a big, big letdown because I wanted to play with my son, Jax. And uh, yeah, you try inviting your friends into an online sort of session and you try to be on the same team so that you can play against other players and you're not allowed to switch teams in a public match. So it would always be me against my son and then three people on my team, three people on his team. We could never actually play a public match on the same team. And not only that, there were issues saying that one of us was always offline. We could never get into the same game. So that was just a mess. The only thing we could do was just have a little mess around in a private match. So that was, again, a really big letdown in releases. Then we come to Star Wars Jedi Survivor. While overall the gameplay was fantastic, the performance on PC was awful. The performance on Xbox was awful. On PlayStation was awful. So all around the performance was terrible for Jedi Survivor. They've already released a patch. They've tried to improve in the stability and performance and things like that. But it's the fact that the game released the way it did. Playing on high-end, multi-thousand pound computers and you are struggling to pass 60 frames per second. Even playing on the Xbox Series X, you barely ever hit 60 running it in performance mode. So overall, a bad launch in terms of performance. And then it comes to the start of May, and uh, we're finishing this one up with Redfall. I've done a few videos for this game on my channel, and it's an absolute shit show. There is no other way to put it. The performance is horrible on PC. There's no 60 frames per second performance mode on Xbox. It's an Xbox first party title and it's a letdown overall. But Redfall, yeah, I've put it down to be the worst game of 2023 so far and it's going to take a lot of competition to come off that top spot for worst release. So that is why I think the modern PC gaming sucks because there are so many games coming out that have the potential, they... They have the stories there, they have the ideas, they have the, like, basically the worlds and stuff set up, and they've got everything to attract players' attention. But when it comes to bugs, when it comes to performance issues, these games are nothing but a letdown, and players are spending thousands and thousands buying PCs, and it just basically makes things worse when you get a game like Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which is absolutely fantastic for the story, the gameplay, and everything like that. But you get them putting out tweets saying that it's because of the players and their configurations of their PCs that's causing performance issues, like running high 
high-end chipsets on Windows 10 when they're designed for Windows 11 and things like that. Some companies will just blame their players. They, I mean, they even tweeted saying that the game was going to have problems two days before it launched. So they knew the severity of it but still released it as it was. So after players spending thousands on their computers and stuff and just hoping to have a bit of fun with a game, a lot of games in 2023 have launched in a really, really bad state. And that is why, in my opinion, I believe modern PC gaming absolutely sucks. I'm really, really hoping the second half of this year can make a massive turnaround and give PC players the gaming experience they all deserve. And on that note, we are going to leave the video there. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like is appreciated. If you wish to support me further as a creator, there are links in the description. Let me know your thoughts about the video in the comments. And if you want to watch more, you can click the video on screen. All support on the channel is greatly appreciated, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.